During this virtual McCart lesson, we are going to be sketching and bringing to life our very own magical Harry Potter potion bottles. Now, for this lesson, I am using a small sheet of white drawing paper. I've pre-selected a few colors for my potion. You can do whatever you want for yours. I have a sketching pencil and an eraser. Let's get started. Now, in order to capture our magical Harry Potter potions, we are going to need to sketch our potion bottles. Now, what we're going to do is start by coming halfway down our page. Find a spot roughly in the center and make a little mark there. There I have the middle of my page. Now, depending on what size paper you are using, drop down two to three inches, depending on how big you want your potion bottle to be. I'm going to come down to about here. So I'm following straight down and putting a visual marker underneath just little spots. So I know where my bottle is going to go. Now this is going to be the main section of my bottle, but I also want my bottle to have a nice long neck. So I'm going to come up a couple of inches and do another visual marker. Now what I'm going to do, is join my visual markers together. So these two down here, I want to make into a big circle. So here I go, nice and lightly, wisping my pencil around, tickling the paper as lightly as I can. That way I know I can erase and move things if I need to. I'm not stuck with any lines that are really digging into the paper. There we are. So I have the main body of my bottle. Now what I want to do is creep away from the bottle and go up to a small funnel up here, which will be the neck of my potion bottle. So here we go. I'm following around my circle. Then I'm going to leave the bottle and come up level with my little visual marker at the top here. Now I'm going to go ahead and just sketch a little oval opening for the top of my bottle. Now what I need to do is the same on the other side. So I'm creeping up. Let's just clear some space. Creeping up, leaving my magic potion bottle, the main body of it, creeping up the neck to the opening at the top. Very nice. Now look at the bottom of my potion bottle. It's very rounded. I imagine if I had that sitting on a table, it would just roll over. So what we need to do is create a little bit of a base down here. So following around, as I come towards the bottom, I'm gonna make a little lip that comes away with a slightly flattened bottom section to it. So now it will stand on the table and it won't roll over. Now I'm going to need a cork, a little stopper in the top of my potion bottle. So I'm going to come in just a little bit from the edge of my bottle and do a little line that comes up. Same on the other side, a little line that comes up with a little ellipse at the top. So a squished little oval with very pointy sides to it like that. Now what I want to do to check that my bottle is super accurate, again, you don't have to, you could have more of a cartoon looking potion bottle. I'm going to draw a mirror image line down through the center. You can use a ruler to do this. I'm just gonna freehand mine. So I'm gonna do a little dotted line that goes all the way down through the middle of my potion bottle. Now this is a very useful line. It helps me see if I have been accurate on both sides. So I should be able to pick up one side of my bottle, flip it over, and it should fit perfectly in the other side. The mirror image line helps me see if there are any differences that need to be altered. Now a better way to help you see the differences, here's a sneaky trick. Turn your potion bottle upside down. So our brains aren't looking at something that we immediately recognize anymore. We are more aware of sizes, shapes, and angles. So if you take a look at my potion bottle upside down, you can see that this side does look a little bit different to this side. 
Now I think I prefer this smooth rounded side here. So I'm going to bring my circle shape in a little bit more. This is a very important step if you choose to do it, if you want a really accurate potion bottle. Turn your work upside down and take a minute to really look and make sure you have the same on either side. Use your eraser to take out everything that you don't want straight away. Remember guys, once this video has premiered for the first time, it will be saved to Facebook and YouTube. You can go back, watch it as many times as you want, pause it, rewind it, and really take your time. There we go, I think I am happy with that. That is a very, very useful line. But now I would like it to go away. So I'm gonna use my eraser, take out that line, and take out that rounded ball shape that I started with. Remember our potion bottle started off just being a single circle, which grew into a wonderful little bottle. So I'm turning back around again. Now, my potion bottle is floating in the air. What I need to do is create a little bit of a tabletop line behind. So I'm gonna come down the rounded section of my bottle to about here. And I'm gonna do a small line that sticks out both sides. I'm not going through my bottle though, just a little line sticking out on either side. Now we've got the fun bit. We can start playing around with our potions. Now, for Harry Potter, oh my goodness, the options are endless. You can do any kind of potion. I already have a potion in mind. I really want my potion to be coming to life in this bottle. So rather than drawing a straight line going across to show my potion, I want to have my potion almost creeping up the sides of my potion pot trying to get out. So here we go. I'm gonna start in my bottle and I'm gonna do these little wobbly lines going up and down. So have a minute to yourself, think about what kind of a potion you would like to capture in your bottle. You could have just about anything. And when you come up with a name for your potion, think about what color would represent that potion. Now I'm going to do dragon's breath in mine. Now my dragon's breath potion is gonna be a bright fiery orange later on. I'm thinking ahead to what colors I would like to bring mine to life. Now I'm also going to have a little bit of spilled potion down on my table here. So coming away from the bottom of my bottle, I'm gonna do a pretty flat little puddle here. Now the potion in my bottle is alive. It is trying to climb up the sides. So I think the potion that's on the table should be doing the same thing. I'm going to have a little bit over here, kind of rising up. There we go, it's creeping up off the table. I'm gonna use my eraser to take out the table line that cuts through that. Again, take your time to come up with something magical for yours. Perhaps if you're doing a love potion, you could have bubbles the shape of love hearts drifting around the background. Another good one would be mermaid tears in a bottle. You could have little tear droplets kind of dropping down the sides and maybe a couple on the table. Now the last thing I'm gonna to add to my potion bottle here is a label going around the outside. So down slightly lower on my potion bottle, I'm gonna do like a little triangle at the top here, like that. And a little rectangular label that drifts off down to the sides. I've got slightly curved edges on mine. It joins up at the bottom there. Now I need to have a little bit of a rope, a little string going around the neck of my bottle, which is gonna be coming down to a hole that's punched in my label there. We'll be doing lots more to bring that to life later. But first of all, let's erase everything that you can see through the label. There we go. Now my potion bottle is ready for some color. This is the fun bit. So have a think about what potion you have created. 
what the name is going to be. If you don't have a name for it yet, don't worry. Just think up a really super bright color for your potion. I already have a few colors here that I've picked out. Remember, mine is Dragon's Breath. So I want this to look like it's on fire. Now I am going to start with a nice bright yellow for mine. Whatever color you want to do, start with your brightest color first. So all over the potion area, just the potion, not the bottle or the base, just the potion, I am going to do a bright yellow. Now I'm moving my paper to make an easier angle for me to work from. And my pencil color is rolling around the shape of the bottle, going right up to the tops. Now yellow is my bright light bulb color. This is wonderful, so bright. I'm putting pressure on the pencil. I really want it to stand out lovely and bright. All the way around. This is just my base color. I'm going to add so many more colors over the top to create some fantastic depth in this potion. And then this is also potion on the floor. So whatever I do in the bottle, I'm going to add to this little guy down on the floor as well that's slowly trying to creep away. There we go. Nice and bright. Wonderful. Now every color I add in my potion, I want to do a little hint of it in the background. This is a super fun, loose drawing. We're not doing a really highly finished photographic piece of work. This is just for fun to see what these pencil colors can do. So what I'm going to do again is turn my work to an easier angle and I'm going to do some little scratchy lines that come up from the bottom around my potion, shooting up. So my line always starts on the bottle and goes up. I don't come back down. I start down low and I go up. That way my lines never run onto my potion bottle or my table because I'm very carefully putting my pencil where I want it to start. If I was coming back down, it would be very difficult for me to stop in time and I would have lines running into my bottle. So start on your line and whip away, just like that. Okay, I'm going to turn again. We're going to do a really cool layered crosshatch in our background with multiple colors. It's going to look beautiful. I'm going to do the same thing with my yellow again. Mine's getting a little bit dull. You can always sharpen yours whenever you want. Again, on the bottle, whipping away. All the way down. The more layers of color you build up, the more depth you manage to create. Super fun. All the way down. We're gonna have so many colors in our background. You're only gonna see a tiny hint of the yellow in the end. Fantastic, okay. The other place I want to hint it, just a little bit of yellow, seeing as I'm using it, we might as well add it wherever we need it, is a tiny little scratch of it on my label here. Now I want it to be a little bit lower down on my label, so here we go. Wasn't kidding, tiny scratch, done. Yellow goes over there. Now I'm ready to create some more depth in my potion. So I'm going to grab my orange. If you have a different color potion going on, just jump to your slightly darker color next. I'm going yellow, orange, red on my fiery dragon's breath. So with my orange, again, I'm turning a little bit. I want to follow the outside edge and I am pressing hard. I want a nice, bright, fiery orange creeping into this potion bottle now. There we go, following around. Now, as I come onto the potion towards the center, I am taking off the pressure, getting lighter and lighter. So I'm tickling the paper about here, very, very light, because I want that yellow to show through in the middle but be really dark on the outside edge. Now I'm gonna go up these little claws of potion here, creeping up the side of the potion bottle, and I want it to be really dark towards the tops, and again, lighter as it comes 
down to my large potion area here. And the same on the last one. There we go. And again, nice and dark on the outside edge. Getting a little bit lighter until I just drift back into the yellow color. Lovely. We are not done building up layers yet. We're gonna make it stand out even more. There we are, starting to look quite fiery, isn't it? Now again, whatever we do on our potion here, I have spillage on the floor. If you do on yours as well, make sure you're adding the same colors. Unless you've done some kind of a rainbow unicorn potion, then you're gonna have all different colors going through it. So again, a little bit of dark on the outside, so pressing harder and taking off the pressure, lighter and lighter as I come towards the center of my little puddle on the floor. Beautiful. There we go. And this little, I don't know what this is. I keep saying claws. This little bit of potion here that's trying to escape. It's going to be a darker orange as well. There we are. Now I'm gonna do just a little scratch of this orange on the floor in a few areas. We're just doing a super fun, relaxed background. So don't be too precious, don't overthink it. Look at that, just scribble it through. Now every color on my potion is going into a really fun background. So this time using my orange, I'm gonna do some diagonal lines. I've already done my vertical and horizontal. Now I'm gonna do just a few diagonal lines. So whipping the pencil across, Oh, I'm at the bottle, so now I'm going to start on the bottle and come away all the way down. I'm doing mine super quickly. Take your time with yours. Remember, once it's premiered, you can pause whenever you want and take your time. There we are. I'm just doing one direction with the orange, but you can see how we're starting to build some depth in there. A little bit of orange as well. Just scribble, scrabble down the label. You can see how scruffy that is. Love it, beautiful. Okay, orange done. I'm gonna creep into my red next to make my potion look even more fiery. So with my red, I only need a little bit around the outside edge. Now I'm really building up a slick waxy surface now. We are burnishing. This technique is called burnishing. When you build up layer upon layer of colored pencil and you get a really smooth slick surface. So if your pencil's kind of slipping about on the surface, good job. You've got a lovely burnished shiny surface. I'm sure your colors are going to be screaming bright. So that reddish color is just going at the points and a little bit around the lower edge of the bottle. Staying away from my big light area here. There we are. And then again down on my little escapee down here that's trying to wander off. There we go. Now, I actually forgot to add a hint of orange in one important area. So I'm gonna go back to my orange, my little cork up here. So what I'm going to do is just scribble, scrabble, a little bit of orange on one side and a little bit over the top. We are gonna use our black to bring this to life. And just a tiny little scratch going down one side of the bottle because this orange and yellow here is going to be reflected in the glass a little bit. So whatever color you have done your potion, whether it's glow in the dark green or bright pink or a really pale blue, you're gonna add a little bit of that on the side of your bottle. A little whip around the bottom as well. Okay, what I'm going to do, speaking of blue, is I'm actually going to jump to my blue next. 
Now on the right hand side of my bottle here, I'm going to do a few little scratchy lines. Keep it light and loose. We want loads of white showing through on your bottle to show that it is that nice glassy looking texture there. Nice and smooth. So down here as well. If I add too much color, we're not going to have that transparent illusion there. So I'm keeping lots of white going through. So I just have a little scratch of blue on the bottom and a little bit up here. Now I'm not adding blue anywhere else. I'm not adding blue in the background on mine. I am going to add purple in the background of mine though, but before I add it in the background, I'm gonna do again a tiny little hint on my bottle, just where I've added my blue. Just a little bit. Fun bit of scratchy detail on there. Okay, now I'm going to go back to doing my horizontal and vertical lines in the background here. So again, I'm gonna to rotate to a slightly easier angle and I'm gonna bring my little purple lines up. Don't be too precious about them, but just make sure you start your pencil on the potion and pull away, whip it up. That way you'll always end up with a nice neat edge down here and a really fun jagged edge at the top. There we go. Coming down the other side, it's the black that's really going to bring this to life. If you haven't thought of a potion name yet, think of Harry Potter. Think of all the magical potions that they have in their labs. Let's have a think. There's the confusing concoction. That one would be fun, wouldn't it? Drought of the Living Death. Hmm, that one sounds a little too scary for me. But there's also Drought of the Peace as well. That one sounds a little sweeter. Uh, there's Felix Felice's Liquid Luck. Now I picture that one being green, like a bright green for good luck. The Pepper Up Potion. You could come up with some pretty interesting colors for that one. I think my favorite Harry Potter potion is Polyjuice. Polyjuice is my favorite because it gives you the power to transform into somebody else for a short amount of time. I imagine you could have quite a lot of fun with that one. Now I've got my purple added in my background. So what I'm going to do now is just add a little bit down on my table. So right at the back here, nice and hard. As I come down, taking off the pressure, blending into my table a little bit underneath my potion pot where my shadow will be a little bit later on when we start adding dark and every now and then just a little bit coming out to the sides there we are That's literally all i'm doing on mine now i am going to switch up and start using my black pencil this is what i'm going to use to really bring this potion to life so I'm gonna start by doing a nice sharp outside edge around my potion bottle to begin with. And you'll see that this black really starts to push this bottle forward. I'm going around the top here. And I'm gonna create a little bit of a lip at the top of my bottle. So the black is being used to capture all those little details that we lost by adding our bulky color over the top. Now we're going back in, bringing it to life, going around my potion. I'm pressing nice and hard using just the point of the pencil. Make sure your pencil is nice and sharp for this. The duller our pencil gets, the thicker our lines get. And we won't end up with these nice, clean, crisp edges. Now, as I press hard, I'm whipping the pencil doing short, sharp strokes. I have so much more control over my pencil when I work like this. When I do one continuous line following around, my pencil tends to wobble a little bit. Even though I'm getting a nice dark line, it's not an accurate line following all of my details. It's much easier to do these short, sharp, wispy strokes. It can take a minute to get used to doing that stroke though. So have a practice. I'm going around my little escape artist on the floor here that's making a run for it. 
And I'm actually going to add a little bit more of a quill to the top. There we go. And around my label. Not ready to write my potion name just yet. That's going to be the last thing that I do. So you've got plenty of time to think up a name. Oh, I just thought of some more Harry Potter ones. They've got Skelegro. That one could be a little bit scary too. And, oh, the Sleek Easy Hair Potion. My goodness, I'm sure you could have some fun bringing that one to life. So around my corkscrew at the top here as well, my little cork in there. Fantastic. Now that is the outside edge of my bottle done. We're going to start bringing some black onto the bottle now to create some dramatic shadow. So all of my shadows are going to be over on the left hand side. This is my shadowy area here. So turning again to make an easier angle, my black pencil starting on the bottle is running around the same shape as the bottle. I'm not going up and down or across. I'm running around. As I come onto the bottle, I'm taking off the pressure, getting lighter and lighter and blending into the potion. So there's a smooth transition from the dark over to the light. You don't see a harsh line where the black finishes and the color begins. It's a smooth blend. That allows us to create a rounded illusion so it looks as though your bottle is coming out and going back in again. It can be a little bit of a tricky technique, so practice. Art takes a lot of patience and a lot of practice. The most important thing is you never give up. There we go. Ooh, looking quite creepy there. I like that. All the way down. And a little bit going up. One or two of my little escapees here trying to creep up the side of the bottle. But remember, it's lighter on the other side, so I don't want it to go all the way over. Now, my label here, you can see how it sticks out away from the bottle. It's going to be casting a little bit of a shadow down here, but not a straight line because it's a rounded bottle. It's going to be a rounded shadow like that. So I'm going to go in with my pencil. Nice little dark rounded shadow there. And that helps to lift my label up. Do you see how the shadow goes back and the label comes forward? And let's just get our little black hole punch in there. Wonderful. Now I'm going to do a little bit of dark on the base here on one side. Very nice. And again, a little bit of dark on my potion that's creeping away on the floor. Now I'm being quite loose with this, just scraping and scratching the pencil all over the place, leaving a little bit of texture and detail behind. Lovely. Let's go up to the bottle now. So same again, a little bit of fun, scratchy detail. Don't add too much. Remember, we want a lot of that white showing through. Following the shape of the bottle. Do you see how my pencil whooshes around? Out, following that curve, not straight up and down. Following the curve. If you've gone straight up and down and you're thinking, oh no, that looks really flat, you can erase pencil color. You can use your eraser to massively lighten what you have and change the direction of it. I'm going to do quite a bit of dark on my cork here. There we go. A couple of little lines coming around to show the volume of the bottle again. Remember volume coming out and going back in so we don't have a flat potion bottle. Now, I really need to sharpen my pencil. Look at this, it's getting quite blunt. If yours is, I highly recommend stop for a second and sharpen your pencil too. Now I am back with a super sharp pencil. I'm gonna start working on the string that goes around the outside of the bottle. Now I'm gonna do a little bit of a pattern here. I'm digging the pencil in. 
leaving a little white gap in between all the way down till I reach that punched hole in the label. I'm going to do the same thing coming around the outside here. And it curves around the back of the bottle there. All the way down. Lovely. So it looks like I have a nice label that's just been popped over the neck of the bottle there. Now I need to really darken my background. What that is going to do is push my potion forward. The darker we manage to get our background, the more our potion bottle is going to come out of the page. So again, what we're going to do, you've guessed it, we're turning on its side and we're going to go up, across, starting on your bottle and you can go diagonal as well. We really want to build up a lovely dark background. So here we go. Take your time. Now I've gone around my background here, adding my crisscrosses. I went horizontal, vertical, diagonal, 
and diagonal in the opposite direction. So I've built up this beautiful, deep, textured background by cross hatching, and you can still see hinted through the yellows and oranges and purples that we laid down first, but creating some gorgeous depth. Now, by crisscrossing, you may have some little gaps sticking out between your bottle and your crisscrosses. You can always go back in with the point of your pencil here and just create a nice, tidy, dark edge right next to your bottle. Get a lovely, sharp outer edge. Make sure you filled in any little gaps. And again, this will really help to push your potion bottle forward. Light areas come forward and dark areas go back. All the way around my potion down here to get the lovely bright orange colors to pop forward. Down the side of my bright white label. And again, along the bottom, just to make sure I have a super sharp, straight tabletop there. On the other side, being careful not to chop off the head of my little escaping tail of potion here. There we are. Now, lastly, we've got a lot of shadow coming down. So again, I'm going to add a little bit of shadow underneath my potion bottle. I am pressing as hard as I can with my pencil right now, making the darkest mark that I can. And I'm going to go underneath my little escaping puddle of potion that's quietly creeping away, thinking that nobody's noticed. A little bit of dark there as well. Now, the super duper fun bit. My potion needs a name. Now, I've mentioned it a couple times during this. Mine is called Dragon's Breath. So to write your label, make sure your pencil is nice and sharp and have some fun. Come up with any name that you want. Now, turn your paper so it's as though you're writing straight along rather than trying to write at a funny angle and have your letters coming down. Rotate your paper just like you're writing on a normal sheet of text paper. So I'm going to do dragon's breath for mine. So I'm gonna do dragon at the top and breath underneath. If you want, you can always sketch it using just normal pencil first. That way you can easily erase it if you would like to change it. So dragon's breath. I'm able to get some lovely fine lines because I am using a sharp pencil. And there we go. You can get as fancy as you like with your writing. I've kept mine rather simple. Now, what I would like you to do is just take a look over your entire piece. Are there any colors you would like to bring forward anymore? Now, I've decided to add a little bit more orange down through my label here, a little bit brighter. This is one of the fabulous features of pencil color. You can just keep layering them up until you are happy with what you have. Now, I always want to do like a swirl or something coming into my potion here. Again, this is optional. Just to capture a little bit of motion in mine. And I'm going to go over my dark shadow here with my red a little bit more. Remember, burnishing. I've got a really slick surface over here. My pencil color is kind of sliding about there. Very nice. It's bringing all my colors together, creating a lovely smooth finish. And there we go. Lastly, tiny splash of blue on my label and I am done. Now, you don't have to be done on your Harry Potter potion. You can carry on working into it if you would like to. Perhaps you have some more space on your table and you want to add a couple more items down there.
If you enjoyed this class, I recommend having a go at trying your very own Harry Potter potion bottle. It can be anything you want. Now, I've done a rounded bottle that looks almost like a teardrop. You can do any shape for your potion bottle. And you can do any potion in your bottle. Hopefully this one little lesson has got your imagination soaring and you've got all sorts of potions running through your mind right now. I think if I was to try this again, I would like to do some kind of a love potion with pinks and purples and a few hearts hiding in there somewhere. Remember, before you start adding colors to your beautiful potion, take your time with the sketch. There are a few things we can do to help us be really accurate. Remember, we used the mirror image line and we turned our work upside down to help us check that it was the same on either side. Then when we were happy with our potion bottle, we started to bring it to life by layering colors. You can layer as many colors as you want on top of each other to create some fabulous depth. Whatever you choose to do, the most important thing is have fun with it. I would absolutely love to see some of your creations, so please share them on Facebook and Instagram. You can tag McCart Studio in them or even upload them to the student portal in Virtual McCart. I really hope you've enjoyed this class and have had some fun coming up with your very own magical Harry Potter potions.